everyone, welcome back to my channel. Before I get right into it, I love making these videos for you lovely people. If you like my content, consider subscribing to my channel. It makes me feel better. Alright, let's get right into it. I've been a little late to this party, but I'm finally going to provide you with my unsolicited thoughts on Bullet Train. At first glance, I thought it would be just another generic action film. I did not know who the director was and neither did I know the cast that was involved, except for Brad Pitt. The movie seems to have a direct premise. Ladybug is back from his sabbatical and has decided to ease himself in with a quick pickup job. However, things soon go pits up when he realizes he's surrounded by other assassins. Little did I know how much I was going to like this movie. This movie has many characters. Here we go. Fuck that thing is hot. And I mean many. Two assassins out for revenge, another trying to prove herself, two more, one obsessed with fruit, the other with Thomas the Tank Engine, both trying to get the job done with, and finally, the big baddie, whose motivations we know nothing until the end. Despite having so many characters, they are all easily distinguishable from one another. They all have their unique MO and killing style, except maybe Brad Pitt's character Ladybug. And even if two characters do have a similar motivation, they are given distinct personalities to tell them apart. Even the water bottle has a well-developed backstory, though I feel it lacked motivation. For a good two minutes, I thought Karen Fukuhara's character might be an assassin due to her role as Kimiko in The Boys. I think they set this up on purpose to subvert expectations. Well, it worked. At least on me it did. But alas, she was just a simple train hostess after all. If they ever made a bullet train too, and I think they could, there is an opportunity for world building there. I think Fukuhara's character could be revealed as an assassin that was on the train for a mission of her own. And I think this is the strength of the movie. The movie with its limited runtime creates compelling characters whose motivations within their personality types are so clear and well defined that it makes you want to care for them and care enough to find out what will happen to them. Amongst the characters we see in the movie, the most badass character has to be the Elder. His backstory and motivation is quite solid and quite nicely ties into the ending of the movie. You think the prince really had the power to kill Kimura's son, but it turns out that the elder was always in control of the whole situation and wouldn't let any harm come to his family. He even finds a way to make it on the train in order to kill the White Death. Similarly, according to me, the most entertaining characters have to be Lemon and Tangerine. And it shoved right inside our ass cheeks. Definitely a diesel in, isn't it? They actually stole the show for me. If this movie was just from their point of view, it would have still been a cool movie to watch. Seeing their banter and chemistry on screen is something that is quite difficult to create and replicate. I have to commend Aaron Taylor Johnson and Brian Tyree Henry for their standout performance. Bought all their contracts, got us all on this, this train. I, me, the Hornet, the Tangerine Lemon. Oh, uh, that was you, right? Yes, very astute. Second reason why I think this movie works is because of its interconnectivity. We have a plethora of characters in this movie with their own stories and motivations on why they are on the train to hell. At first, I thought we would have multiple storylines with their own end goals, but I was genuinely surprised and satisfied as to how they managed to tie all these individual strands of all these independent storylines and motivations into one solid tightrope movie. There are multiple Chekhov's gun elements sprinkled throughout the movie that have a very satisfying payoff. For example, the boom slang snake. The stealing of this snake is mentioned at the beginning of the movie, right in the hospital. Then later we realize the snake is on the train. But not only that, it's this specific snake's poison that makes people bleed from their eyes. That happens to be the poison used for the massacre that took place at the wolf's wedding and the same poison that is used to kill the white death's son. If you mention Thomas Tank Engine one more time, I'm gonna shoot you in a f***ing face. Thomas the Tank Engine. This is introduced to us as Lemon's harmless obsession, but is later revealed to be an important plot point that helps Tangerine figure out that the prince was the troublemaker, the diesel all along. Unfortunately for him, it was too late. There are more obvious ones, like the prince rigging Kimura's gun, Momomon mascot being an assassin, the sleeping powder that knocks out Lemon, and so on and so forth. 
I would also like to talk about foreshadowing. While it's not as immersive or intricately set up as the Chekhov's gun, it's pretty neat the way the movie foreshadows Tangerine's death and Lemon's survival. Tangerine tells Lemon to wear the bulletproof vest, which ends up saving him from the prince's gunshots. And Tangerine dies because as Lemon highlights, I don't know if this give you a full sense of security, you might not get shot in the neck. The use of luck as a plot point is something I really appreciated in the movie. You don't have bad luck. Really? It is a character gift or curse that helps progress the plot and is not played as those ex machina or plot convenience. Although I can see how they can use it as such but it did not feel like it and was incorporated quite well in my opinion without abusing it. Ladybug thinks he has bad luck and from his point of view you can see it. His foot ends up in a puddle, he loses his ticket and the key and he can't get out of the train. But I think he also has good luck that does help him get out of tricky situations without him even thinking about it. He kills all of his adversaries without even trying to because circumstances lead them to die around him. He gets bit by the poisonous snake only to have the antidote already in him. To top it off, he survives a train crash. A big Freaking Momomon costume cushions the blow. Kind of reminds me of Jack Sparrow. Captain Jack Sparrow, if you please. So his luck kind of finds ways to nullify itself, which some would call fate. A little of this, a little of that. Uh, don't worry about it. I don't know much about fight choreography, but here are my two cents. The movie makes it a point to embed its surroundings in its fight scenes. It's not just a fist fight, it's a fist fight in the moving train. A good example is the fight scene between Lemon and Ladybug in the quiet car, which was very creative. And while it does give off a similar vibe to the library scene in John Wick, I mean the guy did co-direct it, you can see his signature all over the action scenes. It makes the scene look real, if that makes any sense, and makes for a quite an entertaining piece of action. Ladybug's fight scenes with the wolf and the viper also have a very distinctive feel about it as well. The fight styles are the same, however, the choreography is distinguishable. Pretty cool how they achieved this in a confined set like a bullet train. Despite having a limited space to work with a Japanese bullet train, it finds creative ways to take the audience to different set pieces. There's not much I can say. I'm not going to break down a fight scene for you. Come back to another episode of Stuntman React. I think you can judge it for yourself that it was quite good. I would also like to highlight how the movie chose to use Japanese versions of classic English songs. While it would have been easy for them to just slap on old famous songs that have been updated for the times to attract that nostalgia money, I'm looking at you Guardians of the Galaxy, they went the extra mile to add this touch and I thoroughly appreciated it. I mean, they still kinda did the same thing I just criticized Guardians of the Galaxy and every other movie that came out after that of doing, but... <laughs> just... Okay? Two honorable mentions would be the movie opening up with the Japanese versions of Staying Alive and closing it with I Need a Hero. <laughs> as much as I like this movie, like all movies, it isn't without its flaws. And this might be me nitpicking at this point and it does not turn me off from the movie. But I think I should mention it. The first one is Chekhov's Gun. The movie shows Ladybug losing his locker key and ticket. However, later when he needs the locker key, he just picks it anyway. And for the ticket, he just shows his receipt and that's that. The twins made sure to sit right opposite Percy to keep an eye on him. They're cautious enough there, but why would Lemon keep the briefcase with all the other luggage? Does not make sense. When the wolf stabs Ladybug, he actually stabs his phone, but the knife is like 2 inches through the phone, yet Ladybug has no stab wounds from this? Also, how high is his phone? The wolf stabbed him in his shoulder. You can't unlock a phone if your eyes are closed. This is just a pure nitpick, let's be honest. Why didn't Tangerine just push out the golf club? Why did he have to shoot at the door? It makes no sense. And how thin are these train doors anyway? Subverting expectations is one thing and having Tangerine not only chase after a moving bullet train but also crack through the glass exterior with his fist and face and walk away with nothing but a minor head scratch, it's a bit too much. Well, how do you know it's a bad thing? Overall, I had a fun time watching this movie. David Lech really knows how to make an action film with compelling characters that I can give a damn about and it's quite a rarity in this genre. I look forward to more of his films in the future. Let me know your thoughts on this movie down below, maybe an interesting detail that I might have missed out or if you just want to say hi. If you liked my content, please like, share and subscribe. It warms my heart. And with that said, I will see you all in another video. Bye bye. Ten quid for that bottle of water, mate. Mm. That's theft.